So we move on to hadith number 20. Um, عن ابن مسعود عقبة ابن عمر الانصاري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فاصنع ما شعت On the authority of Abu Mas'ud عقبة ابن عمر الانصاري May Allah be pleased with him who said The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said from the words or from the things which reached us from the previous prophets is that the people still find are amongst the people is if you feel no shame then do as you wish so again the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the words of the previous prophets that the people still find are if you feel no shame then do as you wish and it is recorded by Al-Bukhari. So obviously the topic is clear. It's about the issue of having haya. And we will discuss um, the main points from this hadith insha'Allah. The first thing that we learn from this hadith is from the first part of the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, Inna mimma adraka nasu min kalamin nubuwatil ula. So this is these words or this concept of haya is something which was taught not only by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but also is something which has been taught by the previous messengers. Just like the previous messengers alayhi wasallam, they taught many things which were similar, such as obviously the calling to la ilaha illallah, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa taala alone, and generally teaching good manners and of prayer and of giving charity and so on, and some core concepts which they all had. Likewise, from the core concepts which we find amongst all of the messengers or many of the messengers is this concept of having al-haya. And we will discuss what is this word or this concept of al-haya. So another thing here is the fact that it was mentioned by many of the prophets shows the great importance of this matter. Just like anything which they all discussed collectively or all brought collectively, like La ilaha illallah being the most important thing, uh, a message of Islam and the religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise this concept of haya is of utmost importance. And also we know from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said that every religion had its specific quality. And the specific quality of this ummah is al-haya. So also more important for us as Muslims, it was taught by the previous messengers, but the Prophet ﷺ also highlighted that every ummah of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the Prophets, they had a specific quality, a specific khasla. And for the, um, prophet, or the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, specifically is this concept of al-haya. And as we said, we will explain that. So what is Haya? So Haya, I've broken it down into three things. So number one, just shame, shyness, bashfulness. And from shame is, we find, for example, and we will discuss, is the story of Ad Adam and Hawa, for example, when they were in Jannah. And when they ate from the tree, they found themselves suddenly they were naked. For, and for example, they suddenly are looking for leaves or something to cover themselves with. This is a natural form of al-haya and shame that they felt. And this type of al-haya of wanting to cover oneself is a natural type of haya, which explains what is this? Or one type of what this haya is. And we will go through what are the different types of haya. Or what are the different ways it can be understood. Number two, it is a moral compass. And in this way, the Prophet ﷺ linked al haya with iman. And they both go together. And as we will say, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that al al iman al haya. They come hand in hand. 
And this is narrated in many, many hadith in different ways as we will mention. So it is the compass. So when you are doing an action, if your haya tells you that that action is good, then it will be good. And if from your haya and your shyness and your awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the action tells you that it's wrong, then that is haya to know what is right and what is wrong. That is part of al-haya. And haya and the concept I'm trying to get here is haya is not just about being shy. For example, it is not from haya, as we will mention, to be shy about asking questions that you should ask and about enjoining good and forbidding evil. That person who doesn't do those things in Islam, he can't say that I'm too shy. This is not what is meant by shyness in Islam. Number three, al-haya is linked to the word al-hayat, which is to give life. And al-haya, the scholars mention the one that has al-haya, then he will have al-hayat. Meaning he is the one that will have true life. The one that has haya, he will live a good and a sound life. And the one that doesn't have al-haya, then he will live a very poor life and a miserable life. And we find this in our times now, where the people are trying to seek happiness from everything other than the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, they find no happiness. They find only sadness after sadness and grief after grief. But the one that has haya in the way that he dresses, in the way that he acts, in his modesty, in his relationship with people, in his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person generally lives a good, moral, sound, happy life. His heart is content, his soul is content, and he generally he will be a happy person. And it is a quality from the qualities of the prophets. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Musa kana rajulun hayyan sitira la yura min jildihi shay'un istihya'an min. Verily, Musa alayhi salam was a man who was a man who was, who had shame, who was shy. He was shy and he didn't like for any part of his body to be shown. He was the most modest and most bashful of people. And when we have this concept of Musa alayhi salam and we read the stories of Musa alayhi salam in the Quran, then sometimes maybe we don't get this picture. In fact, the story we get from the Quran in Surah Al-Qasas, for example, when the two women, they are trying to get water from the well, is the opposite, where the women, they are the ones that are being shy, and Musa alayhi salam is assisting them with getting water from the well. And then we know the story that he goes on, and one of the women says to their father that, you know, he is one of the good people and trustworthy people, and then he marries one of those women. And we also know the story of Musa alayhi salam where he punches somebody and he kills that person. But again, bring that in the link with what is being said here for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was the most shy and most bashful of people. So sometimes it's not just linked obviously here because he didn't like any part of his body to be shown, but also part of following anything which Allah gives, that is true haya. And from the prophets, they were the foremost in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing what Allah had commanded them. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also described by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri as comes in al-Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim. Kanan, kanan, uh, he, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri he said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أشد حياء من الأذراء في جذرها فإذا رأى, شي, رأى, رأى شيئا يكرهه أرفناه في وجهه That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was more shy than the virgin girls 
in their own, in the, if you like, the secluded rooms of their homes. Not like when they're walking around in the kitchen or the living room or the dining room, but in their own personal chambers. The Prophet ﷺ was more shy, uh, again, maybe not whether he was, had more haya than those virgin girls. Such that when he had a feeling about something, you would, he wouldn't say it, but we would be able to express it from his face. So likewise, if a woman is, for example, asked about marriage proposition, she doesn't need to say yes or no. Sometimes her silence, for example, is acceptance. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ in his mannerism, if he was upset at something, for example, he may not want to mention it. If he was asked about something that wasn't worthy of being mentioned, he wouldn't mention it, but you would be able to see it on his face. And from shyness we learn in this respect from good manners and morals is not to overly talk about things also that are not worthy of being talked about. And we learn this also in the first hadith. For example, when we found about إِنَّمَا الْأَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ And we said, why is it that the second time, for example, the dunya and the world, person who goes for, travels for the sake of the dunya and a worldly benefit, it was only mentioned once. Not mentioned a second time. But when the immigration force for Allah and his messenger, it was mentioned the first time and then the second time also. Because it's something worthy of being mentioned. Whereas it's not worthy of being mentioned, you let it go or you can just show it, for example, in your character, in your facial uh, expression. That is something disgusting, something disappointing, etc, etc. But also the Prophet was on the opposite end of what haya is, he was the foremost of those who called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this message of la ilaha illallah. And he was the final and the greatest of the messengers and how he spread Islam and how he fought for Islam and this way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that respect, in his following the commands and obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bringing us all to this deen, then this is also part of al haya Okay, al-haya in what or with whom? Firstly, a person should have al-haya in himself. What does that mean? As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا كَرِحْتَ أَنْ يَرَاهُ النَّاسُ فَلَا تَفْعَلْهُ That what you dislike the people to see, meaning from you, then don't do it. Or generally the things that you dislike the people they see, then don't do those things yourself. And this is an amazing statement. That in our own homes, when we are solely on our own, or with our families, if we wouldn't like, for example, to be seen outside, whether it be wearing clothes which are dirty, for example, and filthy with filthy clothes on, as I mentioned in one of the previous uh, discussions, that one of the Salaf, he said, how about a person, is he not shy that he walks around, or he's seen in the masjid or on the streets, for example, and he has uh, some dirt on his clothes? For sure that person would be shy. Imagine you had an interview, for example, and you had some dirt on your clothes. You would be trying to hide that shirt or hide it from the interviewer because you will feel shy and you will feel ashamed. How about the person who comes and stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has in his heart all sorts of sicknesses, diseases, sins. Is he not shy in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the way that you dress, if you dress a certain way outside the house, then you should also have a certain amount of haya in the way that you dress in your own home. If you have a certain haya in the way that you talk to people outside, then the way that you talk inside the house and the way you behave when you are on your own and the way that you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are on your own, then have that self-respect for yourself and have that haya within yourself when you are secluded and on your own. Number two, in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 
Allahu ahakku an yustahya minhu min nas and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more deserving of you having haya in front of him than the people so to have haya in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be shy in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the things that you ask from him in the way that you worship him meaning again we said that haya is of many types so one is general shyness that, that doesn't mean that we don't ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the things that we want. For sure, if we're going to ask something, we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that He is the one to whom, whom belongs the keys to the heavens and the earth. But it means to come with certain manners and certain etiquettes and a certain way of dress and with certain preparations. That we come with clean clothes, that we come smelling nice, that when we go and see someone that we respect, and we see a righteous person, for example, a scholar is coming to visit us. Then we dress nicely and we speak softly and we smell nice. And all of these things, how about the way that we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we wear and how we behave and how much we concentrate and how we smell. All of these things are about our haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the brother he mentioned when he was giving some uh, durus about Islamic personality, he discussed one hadith about haya, and it is also everything which enters the mind and everything which enters the stomach. All of these things are from haya. In fact, everything, as we said, because it is, because it is linked with iman, everything which increases the iman is part of haya, and everything which decreases the iman is part of al haya. So to do the actions of worship in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing the obligations and then doing all of the optional actions and doing them perfectly, the more perfect the action, the more perfect the person's haya is in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that have haya in front of him foremost and that we have haya within ourselves. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, as Imam Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, he mentioned in Silsala al-Sahiha, and he said it's Sahih in his book, أُسِيكَ أَن تَسْتَحِي مِنَ اللَّهِ كَمَا تَسْتَحِي مِنَ الرَّجُلِ الصَّالِحِ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ That I advise you, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I advise you to be shy in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as you would be shy with a righteous man amongst you or from your people. So as I said, if somebody righteous was in front of you and you knew that he was the most righteous person in your community, you would be shy to talk to him. In fact, I was just talking to one of my cousins yesterday and he said he had lunch with one of the shuyukh from uh, Saudi because there was a conference, for example, in, uh, in one of the towns in England, I can't remember where, and he had the opportunity to have lunch with the sheikh. And also one of my cousins, when he traveled to Hajj and Umrah, he went to visit some of the shuyukh. And one thing that you find common with the people is that when they go to visit them, they have the idea that they will have this blessed opportunity to miss them, you know, visit the sheikh, and they will ask him some questions. But when they get to that situation, because of the moment and that shyness in front of the sheikh, they don't remember what they were supposed to be asking in the first place. So they're overtaken by that moment. Because they're in awe of and respect of that person that they forget about what question they were going to ask in the first place. And this is how we need to be, that this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have, that if we are shy and we have this respect for a person, then how about our respect and our love and our honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our shyness in front of Him in the way that we approach Him and the way that our hearts should tremble when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to think about how can we change our actions from being normal, habituary, habit, habitual actions to having that feeling in the heart and that presence of heart when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And try to do that every time for every action that we are going to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have mentioned this many times. If we are able to do that, then for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he guided us to Islam, he will guide us within Islam. Meaning to the right path within Islam. 
to the correct way, to the way of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So number five, Haya and his connection with Iman. As we mentioned previously, Al Haya is directly linked with Iman, just as Iman. Yes, so, okay, okay, I haven't gotten this. But again, there's a famous uh, narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is narrated when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting. And Abu Bakr, he came in, and the Prophet Sallallahu, I think it was part of his shin or something was showing. And for and a beautiful hadith where Abu Bakr, he came in, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't cover that part of the shin. Then Umar, Abu, Umar radiallahu came, and again the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't cover his that part of the shin or whatever part of the body I can't remember now. And again then Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an he came in, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as soon as he saw Uthman radiallahu an he started to check himself, and he started to cover that part of the body. And he was asked, why, why, why is it that when Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr and Umar came in, you didn't do that. But when Uthman came and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that should I not be shy from the one that the, even the angels, they are shy of him. There's a beautiful quality of Uthman radiallahu an, that he was the, one of the most shy people amongst this ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is something well known from him. So maybe as homework, everyone can go away and read about Uthman radiallahu an, and how he, and how he had this great quality. That how he used to cover himself, never liked for his body to be shown. How he was very humble and very well quietly spoken, etc., etc., and how he was shy in front of the people, not to speak about lewd things. And lewdness is from the fire. And shyness is from Jannah, as we know from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also, um, as the brother mentioned, for example, even here when we are setting, we mentioned when we were talking about the angels, that the angels, they come in these types of gatherings, where the people are mentioning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and people are mentioning the salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the angels, they come. And one of, those, uh, one of the different roles of the angels, one of those roles is that the angels which come and sit in the halaqat of dhikr. So they are here amongst us. So should, like we are shy in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they are a creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that only do what Allah has commanded them. So should we not be shy in front of them to disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? When all they do in reality is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night based on what Allah has commanded them. So as we said, al-haya and his connection with iman. Just as iman gives life to the heart, haya does also. As we said, al-haya is also linked with al-hayat giving life. So just as Iman, the one that has no Iman, then he has nothing. He has no life. No action will be accepted from him. He will be a person from the people of hellfire. The one that has Iman, he starts to have life. And the more Iman that he has, and the more actions that he will have, the more life that he will have. And likewise with al haya this moral compass that a person has, Whenever he knows what is right and he does what is right, then his haya is increased and his iman is increased. And whenever he disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then his haya is decreased just like his iman is decreased. And if iman is removed, then haya is removed. And likewise, if haya is removed, then iman is removed. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-haya'u wal-imanu qurina, fa'idha rufi'a ahaduhuma, rufi'a al-akhar. That iman and al-haya, they are, go hand in hand. If one of them goes, or if one of them is lifted, if one of them is removed, then the other is also removed. You cannot have one without the other. A person generally he has no haya and is a problem that we find in today's society. 
is that the people, they don't have haya. We need to be careful talking about today's times, what we look at when we go on the internet. When we go onto Facebook, for example, the types of things that we are looking at, the types of things that we are re reading. Sometimes, wallahi, I say that if some of you, maybe you went to your home country, whether it be Pakistan or India or an Arab country, and you stayed there for even a few weeks or a few months, and then you came back to the UK, you will realize what your eyes are actually being accustomed to. But because we've lived here for a long time, then when you stay, when you stay here for a few weeks or a month or two months, the people again will start to say, there's no problem in this country. We don't have any issues. Yes, we have a lot of freedoms, but for sure there are a lot of fitan as well that we need to protect ourselves from. That when you go to the Muslim lands and you're free from that, whether it be looking at the opposite sex, whether it be looking at lewd pictures in terms of advertisements, whether it be the type of things that you hear on the radio or the TV. These are things as Muslims we need to be very careful of. Because as we know, shaitan, the way he works is he will look for something small. Just you're watching an advert where a woman is not dressed properly, then that it will lead to the next thing, then it will lead to the next thing. And before you know, you will commit zina without you having even thought that you could even enter that or go that far. And likewise with all of these things, the one that protects himself from the small things, as we said, ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk. You know, don't go towards the doubtful things. The things that will lead you to that which is haram, don't even try to entertain them. This is from a person's haya. And the Prophet sallallahu and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also said, Al-Imanu bid'un wa sab'una shu'ba aw bid'un wa sit'una shu'ba fa afdaluha qawluha la ilaha illa Allah wa adnaha imatatu al-adha min al-tariq wa wal-hayya'u shu'batun min al-iman. The iman is 70 odd or 60 odd branches. And the highest of them is the statement, La ilaha illallah. And the lowest of them is to remove something harmful from the road. And verily, haya is from Iman. So again, we should take away that a person, if a person finds that his Iman is being decreased and his actions of worship are being decreased, or the manner in which he performs the actions in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being weakened. Or they're not like they used to be before. One of the foremost things that a person should check is, is al-haya. And you will generally find from this preparation of how you are, how the way that you do the prayer, doing it in a nice way, in dressing in a nice way, doing the right preparation, doing the actions slowly and beautifully then all of these things, they are from al-haya, and they for sure are things that will increase the iman. And the one that prays quickly, up and down, up and down, straight away when I'm just doing it with my hand, you know this is not haya. So our moral compass tells us straight away, and we know that when we have done an action like the prayer, after the prayer we know was this prayer good or was it not good. Maybe even if we had a piece of paper for the five daily prayers for a month and we were to do the prayer and then say to ourselves and just ask the question at the end, did I do the prayer good or did I not do it good? Your moral compass, compass of haya will tell you, did I do it right or did I not do it right? And use that to improve yourselves. Assess yourselves. Examine ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will examine us. Okay, um, in terms of the wording, I will go back to the hadith itself, just so that everyone can read it again. So the wording in the second part of it is, إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ 
So from this, the scholars, they say there's a number of meanings that you can take, or the way that you read the text can be read in a number of different ways. The first way, even if you read the English, where it says, if you feel no shame, then do as you wish. It can be read as though it's a threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning you and threatening you. Meaning that you have no shame, then do whatever you want. As though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really ridiculing and debasing this concept of not having shame. And likewise, the one that has shame, he has a great quality. And the one that has no shame, he has no good quality. And he will do whatever he wants of lewdness and evil and wicked deeds. Another way that it can be read is just normally, like as though it's a statement. If you feel no shame, then you will do whatever you want. Which is also true. That the one that has no shame, he will do whatever he wants. And the third way that it can be read is actually as a, in a positive light. Mean if you feel no shame, then do as you wish. Meaning if you feel no shame, meaning if you feel no shame, there's no shame in this thing, then do it. And the scholars say, they say these hadith arba'in un nawawi, they are all things which are jawami ul kalim. The Prophet said very few words, but the hadith it can be read many ways and it gives some beautiful meanings however you read it. So we again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us from our hayya to use it as a moral compass which enables us to determine what is good and what is not good. And as we will explain, there is a type of hayya which is natural. Which you know, like we gave the example of Adam and Hawa. When they were in that situation where they found themselves that they were naked, then it was natural from their natural inclination, from their fitra, that they knew that they needed to cover themselves. But there is also that which we learn from Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is an acquired type of hayya. So a natural type of hayya is knowing to cover oneself, as we said. And knowing generally what is good and bad. If you were to see someone for no reason at all, he was killing someone or slandering someone for no reason, then we know that these things, they are not good. And we know generally good speech is something which is going to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And evil speech is something which is going to be disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the acquired haya, then this is we must learn from the book and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And as we know that as Allah mentions in the Quran, that sometimes perhaps you think something is good for you but it's bad for you, or sometimes you think something is bad for you but it's good for you. Allah knows and you do not know. So in these matters we must know from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we must know from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything which will our increase our iman, everything which will increase our hayya. The more we know about Allah, the more we know about the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, the more that we follow him, the more our iman will increase, the more hayya we will have in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the more likely we heard we are of obtaining Jannah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> what are the fruits? What are the fruits and the benefits of having al haya? Sorry. What are the fruits and the benefits of having al haya? Number one and foremost, it is the one that has haya will have jannah, and the one that has the opposite of haya has a lewdness, will have the hellfire. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-hayya'u min al-imani wal-imanu fil jannati wal-badha'u fil jafai wal-jafai fil nari The haya is from iman. And iman is in jannah. 
and lewdness. Or the opposite, and lewdness leads to, is not from Iman, and lewdness leads to the hellfire. Number two that we learn from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is haya whenever it comes into something and this is again something we should really is just clear that when softness and and uh, humility and modesty and shyness and having having shame they enter into something then that thing will be done beautifully and that thing will be done in a nice manner as we mentioned and that person will have thought about what he is doing he will do this action in a perfect way so whenever al-haya enters something, it beautifies it. And whenever you have the opposite, you're rash, you're obscene, you're quick, you're hasty in doing something, then this is something that will disfigure something and will ruin its beauty. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا كَانَ الْفُحْشُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَهُ وَمَا كَانَ الْحَيَاءُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُ As it comes in Al-Bukhari and in Al-Muslim. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that lewdness does not enter in anything except that it blemishes it. It puts a black dot on it. It disfigures it. It makes it unbeautiful. It makes it horrible. وَمَا كَانَ الْحَيَاءُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُ And Hayah does not enter anything. Or Hayah isn't in anything except. It beautifies it. It makes it beautiful. It makes it nice. It makes it perfect. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, الْحَيَاءُ لَا يَأْتِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرِ That shyness does not come except with good. And the more haya a person has, the more good that he will have. The more of his actions will be accepted. When the iman is high and the actions are good, the more of those actions that will be accepted. So we should work hard to attain both types of this haya, this natural haya of shyness and the way that we approach, in the way that we physically look, the condition of our physicality, the condition of our hearts, and the way that we approach our actions of worship, the way that we uh, attend to other people, the way that we behave, and the manners and etiquettes, as well as the acquired haya of knowing how to perfect these actions of worship, which we know that are good. How do we do them? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to do them? How can we perfect them so that we can have this complete form of haya, so that we can become true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lastly, okay, there's an extra point there. So as I mentioned, I already mentioned that point, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ دِينٍ خُلُقًا وَإِنَّ خُلُقَ الْإِسْلَامِ الْحَيَا That every religion, or every prophet, as we said, in the religion that he came with, has certain characteristics. And the characteristics of this religion is al hayya Or the focal point of the characteristics of this religion is al hayya And the last and final point, inshallah, is that this hayya that we have should not be something which prevents us, as I also mentioned, from doing those things which we are obligated to do. So it's not correct for a person to say, I gave the example about the person who goes and visits the scholar, it's not correct for him to have the intention that I won't ask him any question. So just like he should not be too shy to ask a question, if he's got something that he needs to know, I don't know how to pray and he needs to know how to pray, it's not correct for him to say to him, I'm too shy. Or sometimes when a husband and wife, they get married, the wife, for example, naturally, the, wife, the women, they are very, some, many of them, they are very shy. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel that you can read the Qur'an in your house, for example. Sometimes you want to read it out loud, for example. This is not a good part of shyness. It is from, this is not, you know, sometimes you should want to be able to recite Qur'an. You can hear it, your children can hear it, etc., etc. To do actions of worship, to encourage the family, to pray together, for example. Yes, it's good to pray on your own sometimes, but jama'ah, pray in jama'ah in your house. There are some things that are not from shyness. 
And we mentioned speaking against evil, standing up for what is right, following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam al-Qurtubi, he says, and we will end with this insha'Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam al-Qurtubi, he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself followed the path of al-hayya. He ordered others to it and encouraged others concerning it. However, hayya never kept him from speaking the truth of following a command of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu la yastahi min al haq That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never shy from speaking the truth. And likewise, we should never ever be shy to speak the truth or to stand up for justice. And maybe one final point we can say, Haya is also a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just obviously his Haya is different to anything that we have. Just like his hearing is perfect and perfect and befitting his majesty, his Haya is perfect and befitting his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are certain things like hearing and seeing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned, he loves beautiful things. And Allah is beautiful and he loves those beautiful things. And likewise, Allah is... Hayyun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this quality of al hayya and this is something that we strive to also attain. Are there any um, questions before we end? Tafadhali Shaykh. Um, taqwa, we said, is the, the, one of the things that we mentioned with regards to taqwa is the physical actions that a person does. And he says he creates a barrier between himself and that which he fears. And we gave the examples, for example, if a burglar was to enter the house, then from taqwa is that he will have an alarm set up, for example. Or he, the physical actions that you do that basically bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for the prayer, for example, maybe, again here we said haya is also the way that you dress, the way that you worship, etc. But also taqwa is also likewise the way that you dress and coming prepared properly. So that you, and, and also like we said, yes, yeah, so to basically to remove these barriers with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to unblock these barriers which prevent you from getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fear the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and anything, like we said, turning off the TV, for example, in the house, is taqwa. And we said here as well, the TV is also linked with hal al hayya So a lot of these concepts that we've talked about, even when we talked about them, they are very, very closely linked. There's a direct link between taqwa, you know, which is consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hayya, also when the brother mentioned, mentioned this is how, how you are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Iman, maybe not directly, more Ihsan is very closely linked with both of these as well. But Iman is something which actually gives you those qualities. When you have more Iman, you read more, you understand more, and you have more Iman, then it will give you those other qualities of Al-Hayya, Al-Taqwa, and the other things that we mentioned. Yeah, they are very, very similar in that sense. However you describe them, you could say, having God consciousness, for example, if you translate taqwa like that, al-hayya is like that. Oh yes, um, in terms of when the adhan is given, can we ask that the brothers don't suddenly come forward to allow the sisters time to get their things and go upstairs, so give it a couple of minutes before you start rushing to the front row. جزاكم الله خيرا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار